This is a, a new study that's just recently come out. You can see the data of this study was published in Redox Biology in 2019. So we're talking about just a couple months ago. This study came out in September. And what they're showing in this research study is that aside from the fact what I've got highlighted here is iodine or iodide ions are an essential dietary mineral and crucial for mental and physical development, fertility, and thyroid function. Iodine is also a high affinity substrate for the heme enzyme myeloperoxidase. Let's make sense of that for just a minute. Myeloperoxidase is an enzyme that the immune system uses to kill bad bacteria and to have an effective immune response. So the byproduct of myeloperoxidase reacting would be an inflammatory process. Now, one of the things that activates myeloperoxidase as an enzyme is high levels of hydrogen peroxide in a substance known as chlorine. Now you've probably heard of chlorine before, or chloride. It's what's found in most of your drinking water. So if you're not filtering your drinking water and you're getting exposure to excessive chloride, it's actually been shown to trigger this MPO enzyme to create more of a reaction, which the byproduct of this reaction is to, is to trigger inflammation. And so what iodine does is it calms this system down and not having adequate iodine and too much chlorine can actually trigger a greater degree of inflammation. And so this, what this study is showing is that the, the newer research coming out thinks that an iodine deficiency is in a big way linked to cardiovascular disease as a result of an inflammatory process. So that's something that's coming out that's relatively new in the research. But we've got some other things that we know um, in, in, in both the research as well that, that iodine is also important for. And I mentioned this earlier, the fibrocystic breast disease. So if women, if you have tender breasts or you have non-cancerous fibrocystic issues, this might very well be an iodine deficiency. Now, the mechanism of action to date is not understood fully. In essence, we don't know why that correlation is, but there've been a number of research studies that show that iodine supplementation for women with fibrocystic breast disease leads to dramatic reduction of cystic tissue formation, but also leads to a, uh, a delinear elimination for many women of the fibrocystic breast pain. So iodine, very, very important in regulating breast tissue as well. Let's go to some of the Let's see, let's scroll down. I wanna, I wanna talk next about what causes iodine deficiency. So for most people, the cause of iodine deficiency has to do with poor diet. Um, we really look at the food sources of iodine and, and so poor diet, what does that really mean? Poor diet means not getting adequate foods that contain iodine. So. Okay, highly processed foods. Now you may be getting highly processed foods and saying, well, I'm getting the salt in those highly processed foods. But if you recall, I just showed you a research study that delineated that more than half of the salts tested didn't actually have the iodine that they should have had according to the government. So you can't really rely on that. Plus processed food and poor diet is a bad idea in general anyway for all of your nutrients. Iodine depleted soils are another issue. The depleted soils, this is not one you're gonna, you're not just gonna go sprinkle some iodine, you know, in your garden. Um, not really. Depleted soils have to do with, with glaciation. So the way glaciers are formed, the way water can, can water runoff can deplete this, the top soil of iodine um, the, or the, the iodine in the top soil, how it can wash it away. And so this is one of those issues where soils are not very vastly rich. Now there are some soils that are richer than others. And a lot of these soils are in river valley type areas. So geographically speaking, river valleys generally tend to have a higher iodine concentration in the soil. So crops that are grown in those areas would tend to you know, take up that iodine and so potentially show up on your dinner plate. Problem is, is that most farming today is done in soils uh, that don't get replenishment. I mean, the greatest degree of replenishment for most soils is manure spreading. And so, you know, the animal manure, if the animal's getting adequate uh, grazing with adequate iodine, then the manure is going to contain some iodine as well. And so when that manure is spread out and cast out over the, over the field, that, that you're going to get some iodine concentration back into the soil. But most farmers today don't use 
a ton of manure. Now, now that's not all, but but many of them don't. Many of them use nitrogen fixation in, in, in the form of, of rotating crops or in the form of chemical nitrogen fertilizers. And, and, and nitrogen is akin to taking steroids, right? So like, you know, the big gym rats take the steroids and their muscles get really big, but their livers and their internal health is destroyed. Well, it's the same thing with using high levels of nitrogen-based fertilizers on fruits and vegetables. The fruits go grow big and, and look good, but they're not very rich in nutrient density internally. And so that includes their ability to incorporate nutrients from the soil. But if the soil is already depleted, you can see where that would pose an even greater degree of problem. Another issue is excessive goitrogen ex uh, exposure. We'll talk about goitrogens in just a minute. So I'm going to pause there and I'll show you what those are in just a minute. But next, I want to talk about halides. Halides, excessive halide exposure. Halides don't necessarily cause iodine deficiency, but halides compete with iodine for uptake into the thyroid gland. So what are halides? Halides, well, I mentioned chlorine earlier, but we've also got fluoride and then bromine. So these three compounds, chlorine, fluoride, bromine, commonly found in our environments today actually are all classified in that halogen group or that halide group. Now, iodine is also a halide, right? So iodine is part of that group. So these four things compete with each other for uptake into your thyroid gland. Now, what happens... People get overexposed to these things. Where do we get those chlorines? We get them, a lot of people get it from not filtering their water, or drinking water that's chlorinated or being exposed to high levels of chlorine. We get fluoride in things like toothpaste, in mouthwash, in the dental chair, and fluoridated water as well, uh, depending on where you live, if there's a fluoridated water process. And then bromine, Bromine is found in the water as well. It's used to as an antiseptic in the water. It's used to kill bacteria. It's also used as a flame retardant. So bromine can be sprayed on mattresses, on clothing, and it can be sprayed on other things that, that are we're trying to prevent from catching fire on a general basis. So, so think of carpets or wood flooring, things of that nature. Bromines are also used as pesticides as are chlorines. We've got a family uh, of, of, of chemical pesticides that are used called organochlorines and organobromines. These can also be used in, in high quantities. We can see them in things like pesticides. Uh, if, you, if you have a pest guy, come and spray your house. And then addition, additionally, fluoride, another source of fluoride exposure that I see very commonly is in tea. So if you're a big tea drinker, if you love to drink tea, particularly your black tea, like your black pico tea, if you if you consume, you know, two, three, four, five cups a day, like the massive quantities, you could be getting excessive fluoride. I've actually seen some cases of fluoride to toxicity in heavy tea drinkers. So if you're getting exposure to all three, know, especially if your iodine levels are already kind of borderline or, or iffy, then now it's going to spark a bigger problem here. And again, that iodine deficiency generally can trend toward hypothyroidism, but halide toxicity can also trend toward, toward hypothyroidism. So the same symptoms of iodine deficiency can be caused by halide toxicity. And I thought it was worth mentioning because many of you are being exposed to those things on a regular basis. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.